In this video, I'm going to try and show how to repair and restore this Telecron selector clock. I have restored other synchronous type clocks, including Telecron's, Hammond's, Sessions, but I've never seen one like this. Uh, what this one does is there is an outlet on the back of it to plug in another appliance, such as a coffee pot. And then by pulling out these little stems, you can set the time that you want the appliance to come on or off. I've never seen one like this before, so I really have no idea how this whole mechanism works. Before going to the trouble of opening it up to try to fix it, I want to confirm that the wiring is intact on the inside. To do that, you need an ohmmeter, flip on, and you just have to touch the leads to the electric plug. And you can see by the numbers flashing that it is intact. We do have continuity. This clock should be able to be restored. Another thing I can check with this clock is you can plug something into the back of it to see if it's going to power the appliance that is being attached. So to do that, first we have to plug the clock in. And as you can see here, it is not running. The only thing I have handy at the moment is a soldering gun. So we'll plug it in. And we have power. I don't know whether it's separate wiring that's going to the motor and to the plug or if it's one circuit, but in either event, both seem to be working. The next step is to open up the back of the clock. And what I'm seeing here, there are four screws that connect the back. There's also the set knob, which I know is screwed onto the shaft that uh, lets you adjust the time. And it looks like there's a ring that's attaching this little switch to the back of the clock. These two things are gonna have to come off before you can take the whole back out along with the four screws. So first we'll try to get these off. First, we'll try to loosen the ring around the plug, the uh, switch. It's starting to turn. That one wasn't bad. To grab this, you need a vice grip clamp onto the stem and what I found with these start knobs they're sort of a left-handed thread that is instead of turning it to the right to tighten and the left to loosen it's the other way around so I'm going to spin it to the right to see if we can get it off Next, I'll remove the four screws. I've removed all four screws. And one thing I like to do when taking these clocks apart is to take a photo of every step of the way so you know exactly how it's supposed to look when you're trying to put it back together. And now we'll see if I can get the back off. Okay, let's see what we have here. The first step I'm going to want to do is disconnect the wiring from the back of the clock. So I have to figure that out and then we'll get back. The wiring on this clock is a lot more complex than a regular synchronous clock would have. Um, Keep in mind these clocks were built in the 30s or 40s. They're anywhere from 80 to 90 years old. And what I'm seeing here is 
the main wire comes in, <coughs> splits off, and there's a wire nut on one end, but the other end goes directly to the plug on the back of the clock. Um, other clocks that I've opened, this wire has wire nuts at either end, so it's pretty simple to remove the main cord from it. In this one, I'm gonna have to cut the wire here and then reattach it with wire nuts at the end because I really don't wanna get involved trying to take apart the plug here. So let me cut that and let's see if we can get the wire nut off of here first. Definitely not the kind of wire nuts you see today. All right, I'll have to cut all this apart and then we'll come back. Before I separate the wires, I wanna to try to give a close up view of it so you have a better idea of what this is looking like. These are the wires that are running into the plug on the inside. We're leaving those alone. This is what's left of the wire cap. I'll be cutting here. Here we have the wires that are going to the uh, switch, which controls the outlet on the back of the clock. And I hope to keep all of these intact when I remove the whole mechanism. And again, this is a good spot to take pictures so you know what you're looking at when you try to put it back together. Another thing I realized in looking at this more closely is that if I just cut the wire here and here, I put the wire cap back on, I can reattach these two with new wire nuts, leaving everything else intact. And I think that's gonna be the way to go. So I'm gonna cut here and here, and then we'll work on getting up the mechanism. I've cut the wires and I've stripped off the insulation from the ends. It'll be a pretty simple matter to reattach these with wire nuts when we're putting everything back together. Looking inside, what I'm seeing are eight screws that have to be removed. There's four outer ones, two, three, and four, and then four inner ones. I'm believing that the outer ones are what's going to remove the entire clock mechanism from the case. I think the inner ones connect the back plate to the front plate. So let's try those first and see what happens. I've removed the four screws and let's see what happens when we try to remove the whole clock mechanism. There you go. This is incredibly elaborate as far as how all of these little pins work, I've yet to determine. But at the very least, I know that I need to remove the rotor and get that relubricated as the first step towards getting the clock to work again. I should be able to remove the rotor by just undoing these two screws here. So we'll start with that. Okay, I'm removing the second screw. This is the electromagnet in here. Interesting how this looks. I'm going to stop to take a photo of this. This is the rotor. This output gear is frozen. It doesn't turn at all. Normally on others that I have seen is some solder attached to the edge 
and it hides a little plug which can be removed so that you can clean out the old oil and re-lubricate it. Uh, there might be some solder along here. I'm not sure. I'm going to run a soldering iron around it to see if I can locate a plug. If I can't, I'm going to have to drill a hole through the side of this in order to access the old oil. After doing some research, I have found that the Telecron rotors do not have a plug that, that can be removed. So the only way to get in here to drain out, to clean out the old oil, is by drilling a hole through the side of it. And you need to find out where to drill safely so you're not damaging any of the gears on the inside. And what I have learned is that the spot to drill is if you go to the little dimple on the side here, you want to drill a hole just opposite that dimple. And let me show you how we're going to do that. What I've done is I've made a black dot where I want to drill into my rotor and I've secured it in a clamp so that it's stable while I'm trying to drill it. The next step is because a drill bit can dance around a bit on a flat surface using a nail set tool with a sharp point I make a little indent And that should act as a guide for my drill bit. The other concern is as you start to drill, some nail filings can get into the rotor. That can affect the gears and gum up the whole works. So to prevent that from happening, I take a little bit of lithium grease and put some on the drill bit. And that way the filings will stick to the drill bit. And we'll give this a whirl. reverse the drill and as you can see hopefully I have a lot of filings that are stuck to the drill bit and hopefully haven't gone inside the rotor the next step is to loosen up and remove the old oil that's in the rotor to do that I use liquid wrench and you can pick up these small applicator bottles on Amazon. They're just a few dollars. They're really good because they have a very fine tip that fits easily into the small hole that was drilled. You fill it up about halfway. Give it a few good shakes. And then proceed to fill it up the entire way. And then we're going to let this sit and soak for 24 hours. The rotor has been soaking now for 24 hours and some of the old oil is starting to leak out from the output gear. You can see the dark stain on the towel here. What I have to do next is shake out <clears throat> all of the old oil. It comes out <clears throat> kind of green. And this takes a few minutes so I'll do this and then we'll come back. <clears throat> the next step is to fill up the rotor with three-in-one oil. And again, I have it in a little dispenser bottle. Fill it about halfway. Give it a good shake. And then fill it the rest of the way. And then we're gonna let this sit for 24 hours. The rotor has been soaking now for 24 hours with the three-in-one oil and I have already shaken out all of the as much oil out of it as I can get. The next step is to put in just a few milliliters of some synthetic clock oil. 
You're able to get this on uh, through Amazon. A little pricey, but it's better than the other types of oils. So just a little bit in here. And the next step is going to be having to seal the hole. Uh, I'll set all up the materials for that and then I'll show you how we do that. What I'm going to do is cover the hole with some metal tape and then seal it with epoxy. Uh, the metal tape is the kind of stuff that you would get to, um, it goes around air conditioning ducts or a dryer duct into the vents, that kind of thing. And I cut just a very, very small piece. Place it over the hole. There we go. <clears throat> then we mix up some epoxy. I use the Gorilla Epoxy, it's quite strong. And then just a very thin coat of it <clears throat> over the tape. This sets up in maybe five minutes, but I let it sit for at least an hour. At this point, I'm a little hesitant to open it up and get to where the gears are. It looks incredibly complex, and I'm concerned about being able to get all these little pegs back in and positioned correctly. But what I would like to take off is the faceplate so I can get to the hands and the dial and clean everything up. It appears that there are four screws holding that on. And when I turn it sideways, I believe I can see two separate plates of metal. So I'm thinking that the face should come away and, and leaving all the gears and everything still uh, held together. So we'll give that a try taking off these four screws first. I've removed the four screws. Now I'm going to try to lift off this outer face. And when we have the outer ring off, what's good about getting this piece off is there's a lot of dirt and debris stuck in here so this can probably get cleaned up nicely. Next I'd like to remove the glass, the whole rim around the face and we'll see if we can pry that up. This will take a while, so I'm going to work my way around it, and then we'll come back. What I've discovered is that there are metal tabs that lock this plate in. I don't know if you can see them in here or not. There's one in here. There's four of them, or five of them. And they're bent inwards, so I have to pry them out in order to slip the, the face off. So let's see how that works. I've pried up all the tabs, and I'm going to remove the outer ring. And the glass. Now we can work on removing the hands so that everything can be cleaned up. To do that, they're usually attached as a friction grip. And before you try to pry them off, I like to put a drop of WD-40 here. Let it soak in for a few minutes before trying to, to wiggle it off. So let me do that. 
The WD-40 has been soaking for a while. It should be easy to remove the hands. We'll start with the second hand. Just pry the screwdriver from both sides. Here's one. Now the minute hand. And the hour hand. Now we take off the dial. And there's a piece of cardboard, sort of a gasket underneath here. Now the clock gets reassembled. First, we take the rotor, position it back in. And we have these parts. And then we fit this over it. Now we have to tighten these screws down. I'll do that and then we'll come back. Before assembling it further, you want to make sure that the clock is working. So what I've done is I've placed the second hand onto the face. I've reattached the wires. I'm going to cover them up with a wire nut. And then we'll plug it in and see if it's working. and it has been successfully repaired. Let's unplug it, and we can proceed with the rest of the reassembly. Next, we reassemble the face. I like to put a mark on the top of the clock that shows where the 12 went, so everything gets put back into the same position. We have the gasket to start, the face, then the hour hand, which I point to 12, line everything up that way. and the minute hand. And the second hand. Next, we have the glass and the ring. And if you recall, this had the tabs that went into the slots and had to be bent. This will take some manipulating to position it properly, so I'll do that and then we'll come back. I positioned the brass ring and bent the tabs so it's secure. Now we put the outer plate back over the face. And there are four screws to tie this down. I'll do that and we'll come back. Next, the clock goes back into the case.
and there are four screws that are going to secure this on the inside. I'll do that next. The clock is secured back into the case and the next step is going to be attaching the electric cord with a couple of the wire nuts and then carefully positioning all the wiring inside here and closing this up and that takes a bit of, of fooling around with it so I'm going to do that and then we'll come back to it. I was able to get the wiring back into the clock, get the back on, put the set knob back on it's plugged in and it is running. So I have a successful restoration here. What I want to do now is see if the timer mechanism works. Uh, I have plugged in the back of the clock a radio. The clock says nine. I'm going to pull out the stem on 11 to start it and 12 to shut it off. And I'll advance the hands and we'll see what happens. Uh, it came on about 9.15, huh. and it shut off at 9.35, okay. Well, the only reason I can think that that would occur <clears throat> is, first of all, it doesn't seem to be very accurate as far as an hour. It went about 35 minutes, but when I repaired this and placed the hands back on, I just set them anywhere. Uh, apparently, it needs to be synced to these stems. If I had to repair this again, I would have inserted the clock into the case without the glass. Then, let's say, pull out the stem at noon, at 12, and then rotate the hands. As soon as the, the uh, radio comes on, then you set those hands for 12. Uh, so that's probably one way to synchronize it better. In any event, it's a, a device that's not really going to be used as a timer. It's just something good to look at. And that's it.